Hello to everybody watching this video. This video will be short, concise and to the point. I've dotted down a few bullets to help with the structure of this presentation. My name is Dr. P.H. Boer and I'm a NRF rated researcher working at the Cape Peninsula University of Technology. My research is focused on adapted physical activity, more specifically on adults living with intellectual disability and even more specifically on adults living with Down syndrome. I have a brother with Down syndrome and really enjoy working in this field. This book is not only intended for academics working in the field of Down syndrome research, but also health professionals such as physios and bios, and also parents who have children with Down syndrome. What is the contribution of this book? Never before has there been an instrument to assess functional fitness for adults living with Down syndrome. Previously, tests were used for individuals with intellectual disability, even though the functional fitness of adults living with Down syndrome is significantly poorer compared to the general population and also those living with intellectual disability without Down syndrome. Also, the need arose as many adults living with Down syndrome have poor functional ability, live sedentary lives and are overweight or obese. Consequently, their quality of life deteriorates, especially when they age. Why the term functional fitness and not physical fitness? Functional fitness is having the physical capacity to perform normal everyday activities safely and independently without undue fatigue. Functional fitness includes terms such as independence, functional ability and quality of life. So what is an instrument used to assess functional fitness? It's a battery of test items used to assess functional fitness by providing norm and criterion reference tables. The instrument includes two balance tests, two flexibility tests, two functional ability tests, five muscular strength tests, one aerobic test, and in addition to body mass and stature. These 14 test items were carefully selected after numerous literature studies and consultations with academic scholars and specialists working in this field. Also extensive pilot studies were conducted. The feasibility, reliability and validity of all of these tests have been previously determined in a large sample of adults living with Down syndrome. In my master's study and PhD um, I tested 371 adults living with Down syndrome. All of these tests are field-based and no laboratory-based equipment is needed. So if we can have a look at some of the tests, there are two balance tests. The first one is static balance, standing on one leg. Dynamic balance as assessed by walking on a balance beam. Two flexibility tests, shoulder flexibility, or also known as the back scratch test. Sit and reach flexibility as assessed by the sit and reach test. Isometric push-up, so this is the five muscular strength and endurance tests. Holding a push-up position for as long as possible. Hand grip strength as assessed by a hand grip dynamometer. Trunk strength as assessed by a trunk lift. Modified curl up adapted to the needs for those individuals with Down syndrome. A sit to stand test to assess lower leg strength. The eight foot to get up and go test to assess functional ability. A six minute walk distance test where the participants walks for six minutes in a rectangle and tries to complete as many laps as possible. And finally, an adapted bleep test or multi-stage shuttle run test ref um, referred to as the 16 meter pacer test. So instead of the 20 meters as the normal bleep test, the distance between the two lines is 16 meters. The tests are then completed on a raw score sheet, which is finally written over into a final score sheet. 
All of the test instructions are provided in these appendices, um, as well as the scorecards. The book also provides norm and criterion reference tables that can be used by the scholar, adapted physical activity specialist, or parent to provide the adult living with Down syndrome a report card and the necessary comments or exercise prescriptions needed to maintain or improve functional fitness. These scores are then compared to normative tables. These tables were obtained from a large study of 371 adults living with Down syndrome. For example, if the participant is male and 30 years of age and compared a, and um, gained a score of 13 sit to stands during the lower leg test, the percentile obtained in the norm reference tables can easily be obtained by visiting the table for males looking for that appropriate test and looking in the appropriate column for his age. Chapter 4 provides more in-depth information regarding the methodology and procedures of test administration. Chapter 5 presents information um, concerning the interpretation of test scores. And lastly, Chapter 6 provides information regarding exercise prescriptions. These tests should be repeated every three to six months to monitor or improve functional fitness. I really hope that you will use this book as an academic, health professional or parent who have a, chil who have a child with Down syndrome to monitor and improve the functional fitness of this population. Thank you very much.